welcome to another Generative Components tutorial. Today, we'll be looking at how to utilize Excel in our workflows. One approach I've been looking at recently is taking XYZ point data from Excel and creating polygons. The advantage of using Generative Components in this process is we can start to utilize some conditions or functions to filter the Excel data and produce the required output. For this example, we're going to take some solar exposure results and produce a polygon grid so we can measure the area of the exposure. So let's get started. Before we begin, let's look at the Excel data we have and the opportunities it might have for analysis. I generated this Excel data from Open Buildings using the Solar Exposure tool. This is a great tool for running quick solar exposure simulations to assist the design process. As a basic example, I created a simple model of a single floor from a residential complex. I set this up with some open building spaces so I could potentially measure the amount of solar exposure for each unit. With the Open Buildings Solar Exposure tool, there's an option to save the simulation to both the design file and to a CSV file. So here you can see the results in the design file. I've just adjusted the display key to show the colors by hour of exposure. If we look at the same simulation from the CSV export, there are a number of useful columns. First of which is Element ID, which will be very useful in measuring the amount of solar exposure based on the spaces I'd already placed in the model. We can also see there's columns for exposed and shadowed seconds, a point count, which looks to indicate if the sample area was a triangle or a rectangle, then there's a list of XYZ numbers for each of the points. To help filter out the solar exposure data, I also exported the space schedule from Open Buildings. This will provide us the name of the space and the element ID or object ID. So now let's get over to generate components and see how we can start utilizing the Excel data to generate some geometry. So opening up a new file, first I'll click on the point tool and select yes and OK to generate a base CS. For the first item, however, let's drag in an Excel range and I'll rename this to Excel Space. Then drag in another Excel range and I'll rename this to be Excel Solar. Now we can link up the two nodes to the relevant Excel files. First, the Space Excel file. This is called space-units.xlsx inside quotation marks. The sheet name for this is Space and we'll place that inside quotation marks. And finally, for the address, it'll also be inside quotation marks. It'll be A2 colon D12. And you can see it automatically opens up the Excel file, A2 being the row, the first row of data, and D12 being the last row of data we need. I have limited the results to column D, so I really don't need the remainder of the Excel data in this situation. For the solar data, the name is base underscore building underscore units underscore solar dot XLSX inside quotation marks. You can type this in or you can simply select the three dots to browse for the file. I don't need a path in this situation as the file is in the same location as my generative components file. The sheet name for this is the same as the file. So I can copy that over and place it inside quotation marks. Finally, for the range, this file is reasonably long and has just under 28,700 rows. So for the range, it'll be A2 colon R28700 inside quotation marks. So this will open up the Excel file and read in all the data as well. If we right click on the Excel space node, we can select add to the watches panel and you can expand the nodes inside the watches panel and then see all the information is loaded and its data structure. It is referenced in 11 rows and each row contains four columns of data. And here you can see some of them are studios, there's one bedroom units, there's a corridor and there's a void. As the first step, let's filter out this data down to just be the studio apartments. To do that, I'm going to drag in a value node. Now I'm currently using update 7 of Open Buildings, which has replaced the expressions node with this value node. So if you're using a previous version, you can easily use the expressions node. Clicking on the box to access the editor, we can type in the expression to filter out the results. So this query, so this starts with the word from, and then we can use a name or a letter to describe a variable. For this, I'm going to call it my space. Then we can type in the word in, and then what we want to filter. So in this case, it's Excel space dot value. And it's important to put the dot value in, so you're working with the values or the results of the Excel node. Then we can add the query. So for this, I'm going to use the word where, and then I can type in the variable that we'd set up, my space. And in this instance, my space is not just a single item. The way I understand this query expression works, it's much like a for loop as it loops through the first index level of Excel space dot value. As it's just the first index when it's returning my space, it's returning in our case, a row of data. And in this case, it has four items. So the query is just like an if statement. It needs to resolve to an answer. So here I'd like to only return the rows that have the word studio in them. And in that row, we need to target that index in my space data. And if we recall, that data is in the first column or index zero, square brackets with a zero inside and then equals equals as we want to match the exact results. And we can type in studio inside quotation marks. And then we can click apply. 
It is a little confusing, but if we look at the Excel space data inside the watch panel, and if you expand the first index, you can see the first index inside this row is corridor. And if we expand the second index, the first index inside this one is actually the row called studio. So if we add the value one node to the watch dialog box and expand that, it has returned seven results, all of which have the first index of studio. So now we can close all the open dialogs. Now we can look at how to extract the list of object IDs or element IDs from this information. Here we can utilize a new node in update seven, the operation node. We might have a look at this node in more detail in a future video, but for now we can just use it to perform some tasks that were already features within GC, but were accessed through the dot, dot operator. Here we can link up the value one node to the subject on the operation node. And then as the operation, we can select transpose. And if you don't have update seven, this could easily be done in the expressions node with value one dot transpose and open and close brackets. If we add this node to our watches panel and expand to see the information, we can now see that the data has now transposed and the columns are now the rows. This will allow us to easily target index two of the data and return all of those object IDs or element IDs. So let's do that with a new value node. We can type in operation one in square brackets two. And if we look at the output options, we can now see that the object IDs or element IDs have been returned. They are however listing as doubles or with decimal places. So let's turn them back into integers by placing two int and then open brackets uh, before the operation and then close brackets at the end. And now you can see the outputs are now integers. So this is all working well. So let's add a few variables so we can ch easily change these inputs at a later date. I'll drag in a new value node and place studio inside quotation marks into this as a variable. And let's rename this to space name. Now we can replace that variable in the value one node. In this case, there's no need for quotation marks now as we've already done that in the variable. So now let's rename the nodes so they make a little bit more sense for someone else opening up the file. The first one we can call filter by space. The second we can call filter space transpose. And for the last one, I'm gonna call it space object ID. Now before we dive into the Excel solar, let's have a look at the data included. I added this to the watch dialog and then expanded it. But as you can see, it takes some time to load that 28,000 rows of data. So let's flip over to the Excel and have a look at the data again. And if we fit all the columns, we can see they have a few key columns. One being element ID, we've got exposed seconds. We have a series of columns with XYZ data and another key row that indicates point count, which will let us know whether we have three or four sets of XYZ data. So let's minimize the Excel window for now and we'll close the watch dialog box. Now the Excel solar is a lot of data, but we can start to filter that data out fairly quickly. So let's drag in some nodes and set up some variables. First, let's drag in a slider and let's rename that space selector. And this will be used to change the element ID or object ID as I've called it. Probably we should have renamed that to be element ID, but anyway. And things are starting to slow down a lot just even in this operation. And this is due to loading all that solar data into the watches panel. So let's open up that watches panel and clear out all the items to speed things up again. So now we can edit the space selector. We can double click on the node and to access its properties and change the resolution to one. For the maximum, we can link that up to the space object ID dot count and I'll minus one at the end because the count is one more than the index because the index starts at zero. Now we can drag in the value node and call this object ID. And for the value, we can use space object ID and then open square brackets. And for the index, we can now use that space selector we set up and we can put that inside square brackets. So now if we adjust the slider on the space selector, we can see the object ID changes to the corresponding index. Now we can start filtering out the solar data. So let's drag in a new value node and call it filter by object ID and open up the editor. For this query expression, we're gonna use from my object in Excel solar, where my object in brackets zero, because that's the item we want to target, which is column one or index zero, equals equals object ID. So we reference that variable we set up. And when I hit apply, I've got an error. And I forgot to include the dot value after the Excel solar. So we can change that again and click apply. This will now look into each row of the Excel data in the first column and match it up to the object ID that we've selected. And if we add this to our watches panel and expand it, we can see it only has 182 items. So it just filtered over 28,000 rows of data and literally a mouse click. And there was literally no delay in waiting for that processing. So if we again look at the Excel data, we might wanna filter out the results again by how much solar exposure they receive. And this is probably indicated by the column B or index one, which is exposed seconds. So I'll drag in a new slider and let's rename that exposure hours and then double click to access its properties. For resolution, I'll set that to one and for max, I'll use seven. And for the rest of the values, they can stay the same. 
So now we have a slider that goes from zero to seven. So now we can start to affect the results based on the number of hours of solar exposure. Like we did previously, we can drag in a value node and I'll rename this to filter by exposure hours. And for the query, I'm going to use from my exposure in filter by object ID dot value where my exposure, so in brackets one, which is the index of the data for the solar exposure is greater than exposure hours, which is the slider we just set up. And we're going to times this by 3600 as the Excel data is in seconds. Now if we add this to our watches panel, and with the slider set to one for our solar exposure hours, we now have only 65 results. So we can clear out the watches panel to keep things running smoothly. As a final filter, let's use the number of points. As you can see here in the data, there are rows with three or four points of information. So dragging another value node and renaming it to filter by three point, we can copy this node and let's rename that to filter by four point as well. Looking at the Excel data once more, we can count across and see that the point count is at index five. So opening up the editor, we can type in the query from my three point in filter by exposure hours dot value, where my point in square brackets five equals three. And before we click apply, we can just copy this and then click apply and open the editor for filter by four point and we can paste in this query and change those threes over to fours. Now, if we add both of these nodes to the watch panel, you can see we now have 34 and 31 items, which adds up to the 65 we had previously. Now, from this point, we could easily write a function to create polygons by dragging in a polygon node, changing its method to by function. And here's a really quick screen grab of me actually doing that. However, for this example, I'd like to show you how to manipulate the Excel data and get the results using nodes rather than a function. So I'll turn off this node's visibility and defer its update so it doesn't impact our performance. So the goal of the next nodes is to split up the data into XYZ information. So we can create some points and then use those points to create polygons. So first let's drag in an operation node and let's rename it filter XYZ point one. So this will be our first point. And we can link that up to the filter by three point as the input subject. Within the operation node list, we can select sublist. And this gives us the option to extract part of the list from the overall list. And in this example, we're gonna take the first index as index six, and then we're going to have the count as three. And this should give us the first group of XYZ data. And if we add that to the watches panel, you can see I've extracted the wrong data. I have just three rows of the data, but it's not the points we need. It's the row with all the other information as well. What we need to do is actually transpose the data first, then target that in XYZ information. So let's drag in a new operation node and link that up to filter by three points and then type in or select transpose from the list. I'll then rename this filter by three point transpose and then link this up to the filter XYZ point one. Now, if we look at the data in the watches panel, we can see we have three rows of data, but they are all the XYZ information we need. To make this data more usable, we can then drag in another operations node and do another transpose. And let's rename this to my three point XYZ. And now if we look at the data, we can now see that we have nice sets of XYZ information. We can now simply drag in a point node and I'll rename this to my three point one. And let's change its method to by coordinate list and link up the my three point XYZ to the XYZ translation input on this node. And we have our first set of points. Looking at the points though, they're a little bit small as the original Excel data was in meters and our files in millimeters. So then we can easily change this by dragging in a value node. And for the input, I'm gonna put in my three point XYZ times or star 1000 to convert meters into millimeters. So let's rename the node to my three point XYZ MM for millimeters. And let's update the point node to include that. For the other two points of this polygon we're creating, we can just copy the nodes after the first transpose. And then we can do some quick renaming to tidy things up a bit. And then in the other two points, we just need to change the first index for the second point to start at nine. And then if we paste the nodes for the third point and change the first index for that to be 12. And now we have all the three points we need for our polygon. So dragging in a polygon node, we can select the input box and then drag over the point nodes and they'll automatically be filled out in the input box and the polygons are automatically created. Now we can turn off the points visibility and I'll switch over to a wireframe view to make it a bit easier to see the updates. 
Now we've done the three point polygons, let's copy all the nodes and paste them below for the four point polygons. So if I paste those below, first I'll do a bit of tidy up and rename all the nodes to four point, and then we'll link up the first transpose to the filter by four point node. And as this is a four point polygon, we'll need to copy one of the branches to make the last point. Then we can change the first index of that branch to be 15. And finally, we can add this point to the my four point poly and we have the rectangular polygons created. To make things a bit clearer, I'll select them in groups of nodes and I'll colorize them. So I'll select all the nodes associated with 0.4 and colorize those, 0.3, and I'll also do the variables and the Excel inputs. Now, if we go over to the space selector slider that we made or the exposure hour slider, we can adjust and we can see the polygons update automatically. Now it takes about one to two seconds for the space selector updates and the exposure hours is a bit faster because it's dealing with a smaller set of filtered data, but it's working really well. So as a final step, if you look at the polygons in the watch panel, you can see there's a mountain of data available for you. And one you can extract is total area. So let's drag in a value node and input my three point poly dot total area plus my three point poly dot total area. And that gives us a total area in square millimeters. So let's add some open and close brackets around the addition there and then divide by 1 million, which will give us an area in square meters. And let's rename this node to solar area. So now we have a script that can take some solid Excel data, match it up with some spaces Excel data, and then give us a resulting area. Utilizing Excel in your workflows is a powerful tool. This is just a simple example, but the possibilities are endless. You could be using Excel to place cells with rotations or scales, placing geometry like columns, changing family and part information, or simply changing the color of elements. As you can see, large amounts of data can be quickly filtered using expressions to give you access to the data you need. Hopefully you'll find a way to incorporate this concept into your next project. Until next time, thanks for watching.